Metals head lower as the dollar strengthens after the ECB rate cut. We'll be getting Vince's point of view on this on Reset. Busy day in the markets following Independence Day yesterday. Vince, I hope you had a good one. Uh, we did, thank you, and I hope your day was good as well. Big day on the EU front today. The euro pummeled after the ECB cut rates to a record low. In turn, the metals followed suit, kind of like a knee-jerk reaction, gold and silver dipping lower. Vince, a lot of analysts I had spoken to earlier in the week had anticipated this. Were you surprised? Um, well, surprised in the sense that we did sell off, not surprised that there was a cut. Uh, what I mean by that is, Every time there had been anticipation of a cut in the past, uh, the the markets would run up anticipating the cut, and then when the news actually came out, the markets would rally even stronger. So you had buy the rumor, buy the news, which is a twist on a cliche. But now I think today was an example of buy the rumor, sell the news, which is very negative for the market in general. Here's what I mean. It means that people are now trading the information, there's no real belief in a recovery coming. So it's, oh, the Fed is going to lower rates or the ECB is going to lower rates. Buy the rumor or buy the, you know, conjecture. And then the news comes out and then you get out. The thing is, there's no greater fool or bigger money to sell to. And today, I think, was the first example in a long time that you saw that happen. If you look at the last two years, every time there was a rumor that the Fed would uh, do something in a QE fashion, you would have a rally and then the QE would be announced and then the market would just take off for six months. If something like that were to happen in the US, uh, I would be very scared for US equity markets. So to make matters worse, Vince, uh, ECB President Mario Draghi saying uh, this Thursday that he anticipates more downside risk for European growth. Is there a shimmer of hope, Vince? Um, no, there was, I mean, there was nothing positive to come out of uh, the rhetoric, uh, but I, I don't think, uh, I don't think, they can't lower interest rates much more. At this point, it becomes forgiveness of debt or, or pure, unsterilized uh, monetizing of the debt. I think it's in Germany's interest to have a, this is a little conspiracy theorist, but it's in Germany's interest to have a slow, orderly depreciation of the euro. It helps them with their exports and gets their economy going and doesn't shock anyone too much. And I think that's what their goal is, to talk the market down uh, while at the same time, uh, talk the euro market down while at the same time preventing it from falling out of bed. So Vince, gold not responding well to this EU news. Is it because we're seeing stronger numbers and figures coming out of the US, a stronger dollar that's really hurting the metals right now? Well, yes. I mean, uh, as a stock trade, you would short Europe and, and buy the U.S. Now, how that relates to gold, uh, uh, again, gold has dual personalities. Uh, one aspect of gold is it's an inflationary hedge, so it will go down when the dollar goes up. And you saw that today. Uh, the other aspect, the other personality aspect of gold is it's safe haven status in time of crisis. The uh, I want my capital returned instead of a return on my capital crowd. And, and today's weakness in the euro, you just have to look at what the market is telling you. The market is telling you that today's weakness in the euro is not life-threatening to the euro. Otherwise, people would be buying gold. Instead, what they're doing is they're selling gold to raise more cash. Uh, I don't know what these European banks are doing, but they're basically, uh, there's no good collateral left except gold. At some point, this will stop. Uh, but right now, the markets are telling you uh, the, the weaker euro combined with the global slowdown is not life threatening to the euro. They think they're going to pull through it. So gold gets sold off because there's no fear of the euro going under and gold gets sold off because uh, the dollar is stronger. Right. And offline, Vince, you were telling me you could see the euro going down to 115, how so? Yeah, one, one, of, our models, one of our models has the euro uh, possibly in the next three months going to 115. Now, uh, we think if it went to that level, you'd probably see uh, much more interest of gold as a safe haven 
coming out of the woodwork, buyers that are not coming out of the woodwork. Uh, it's, it's important to note that we've been talking for the last couple of weeks about 1525 being a level uh, of support in gold. And we got pretty close to it last week. We didn't speak last week, but we got pretty close to it. And uh, we were a little nervous and we were very pleasantly surprised at the rally uh, off of there. Again, uh, we don't think that gold does much of anything above 1525 and below 1670, except be a good day trading tool. Uh, but to answer your question directly, if the euro were to go to 115 in an orderly fashion, it would just kill volatility everywhere and everyone would be lulled into a comfort zone uh, except for uh, European stock markets. However, if it went down there quickly because of some news, uh, you would have panic buying of safe assets like gold. All right, moving on to China now, Vince. There were hopes that the country would relax the reserve ratio requirement for banks. Instead, the country's central bank was even more aggressive, unveiling a 25 basis point cut in the one-year yuan deposit rate to 3% and reducing its one-year lending rate by 31 basis points to 6%. Vince. Well, uh, it's relevant in what the market didn't do. Uh, this is something that probably was not expected. The markets did not care. So you can say that intervention only helps in the direction of the trend. And by that, I mean they did more than was expected and the market did not care. I believe the market is starting to perceive this as the tip of the iceberg of problems in China. China has created, this is the problem with China. They have created GDP. They have created an economy, but they have not created wealth. So all of the all of the GDP they've created has been to create facilities to sell goods to us, which we ain't buying anymore, or at least not as much. The result is you now have factories uh, that are laying off people. You actually have wage pressures internally because China has inflationary problems, and you have empty ghost towns of buildings that they're storing their extra copper wiring that they've bought. So China China is in bad shape, I think. I think uh, China uh, China is going to have a hard landing, and that's going to be that would be the catalyst for uh, a drubbing of the euro. Um, and again, we the U.S. would be the tallest uh, pygmy, as I often say, and gold would be the tallest commodity. So obviously, not good for the base metals in turn, right, Vince? If China's in bad shape, definitely not. Uh, you you would you would look. You would look to um, you would look at countries that make their money supplying China with finished products uh, on or raw materials. So raw materials would be Australia, uh, finished products would be Japan, and you would say those companies and those currencies are going to have a problem. The yen won't have a problem, but Japanese companies would probably have a problem. They're heavily involved in base metals uh, refining for the Chinese. All right, overall, Vince, a very good summary of today's uh, news events. But what do we make of it? What are your final thoughts for investors? Should we be pessimistic? Don't sweat, don't sweat what's going on in gold uh, if you're an investor, because we're right smack in the middle of a range. Uh, what you should be looking at is, uh, you know, you should be looking at buying physical gold uh, on a washout if there is one, because it's not, it's, it's not going it's not going to be worth less than a good suit, as they say. Uh, just as a side note, the LIBOR scandal that's going on is just another example of a change in zeitgeist out there. People, it's like, if you're a trader, it's short people buy things, right? People are not to be trusted. People have abused uh, policy uh, policies or lack thereof. Uh, Management isn't very good at being frank, but a, a yellow inanimate object is not going to lie to you. So that's where we are. All right. I'll allow you two final thoughts for today, Vince, just because I'm feeling generous. Go ahead. Two? Two final thoughts? That's wonderful. I appreciate it. Uh, so this would be PSS. Don't expect any rescue between now and the election. Bernanke's not doing anything. And as my colleague across the way there said to me, Right now, he's picking up his golf clubs and he's just going to the course. He's not going to get involved in a political situation by changing monetary policy. So there's no savior coming between now and the end of the year. PSS, I love it. Thank you so much, Vince. And thank you so much for having me again. 
And we'll see you again next week. You can email me in the meantime at newsfeedback at kitco.com. For Kitco News, I'm Daniela Kambonik.